Hi, my name is Danny Smolders. I'm the regional manager for SD-WAN across APJC for Cisco. And today I would like to take you through our session called SASE Made Easy with Cisco. Now, what I usually like to do in these sessions is to look at two things. First of all, I like to look at things that have changed and put these against the things that have not changed. And obviously our world as we knew it has changed dramatically over the past 12 to 18 months. It has absolutely accelerated what we now call the multi-cloud world. What you're seeing on the map here is something that we're fairly familiar with from the past. We still have users, we still have branches, we still have data centers, we still have devices and things, and they're all connected in one way, shape or form. But what has changed is that all of these applications are now in one or multiple clouds, basically eliminating the way we used to know networking. And we've evolved to what is called cloud networking. Now, when we say cloud networking, the first things that come to mind are applications like Dropbox and Office 365, and maybe some of you are even using uh, Salesforce. But what we need to add into the equation here is infrastructure as a service, which you see on the left-hand side of that, of that presentation. And that's these major global cloud providers such as AWS and Azure and Google Cloud. What we've seen in that area is applications being distributed no longer in a single cloud, but into multi-clouds. Now, obviously, that's what has changed. What hasn't changed is the need for those users, those branches, those applications, and that data to stay secure. What hasn't changed is the expectation from those users to have a consistent and optimal application experience. So what we're seeing is two worlds that were traditionally isolated or working in silos, the networking teams and the security teams are having to align to common goals because that complexity requires these teams to start working together towards common goals. And very typically, those common goals are very business oriented. You cannot have optimal user experience if you have serious security risks. We've seen plenty of examples over the past year where attack vectors have become more complicated, more advanced, more sophisticated. In that regard, tools, technology, and teams have to become more sophisticated as well. So we're really seeing that alignment between those two teams that historically had their own set of tools, their own way of working. They're actually coming together to, in, in our present world. So within that frame, it's important to understand what is Cisco's SASE vision. And it's really about combining our best in class networking, security, and observability technology into a single service, which will be available under a single subscription in the not so distant future. And what we wanna do is secure access to any application, wherever that application may be, over any at network, wherever, whatever that network may be, or anywhere those users happen to work from, whether they're from home, whether they're from an office, or what is likely going to be our new normal, which is like a hybrid working space. So if we look at what are the components of a typical SASE architecture, what you see on the left-hand side of the screen are really what we call our connectivity solutions, which is either SD-WAN powered by Viptela or Meraki. It is our remote access uh, product suite. And on the right-hand side, you've got our entire cloud security and other security offerings, which Vishak will be talking about a little bit later. When we actually converge these into that single offer that I just mentioned, that's what our SASE architecture looks like. Now, there's no point in having connect and control if you're not observing what's going on. I like to say you don't know what you cannot see. And that's where our latest acquisition, Thousand Eyes, which we did about a year ago, um, comes into play and adds that observability right across the board. So what is the role of SD-WAN in this new norm? Right, and just for recollection, the new norm is obviously multi-cloud. It's to connect a hybrid workforce, which may be working from home, maybe working from the office or both, to applications that could be anywhere. And what makes that possible from a Cisco perspective is what we call cloud on-ramp, which enables infrastructure as a service integrations, enhanced application experience with software as a service applications, 
and cloud agnostic branch connectivity. And I'll talk about that in a little bit uh, later. Security your way is to secure those apps and that data wherever they may be from anywhere they may have to be. And so whether that's on-premise or cloud-based, and as I mentioned, Vishak will be walking us through that, with Secure SD-WAN, that makes your SASE-enabled architecture where and when it is needed. And then last but not least, it's that observability that I, ju that I just talked about with a thousand eyes. And we're making sure that we're automating all of these things from an end-to-end -end perspective. Now, we like to call SASE to be a journey. And we're in a reality where that journey has become cloud first. And if you look at the left-hand side of the screen, what you'll see is, is what, what everybody's familiar with. It's the Cisco SD-WAN fabric, which runs on any kind of transport, whether it's 4G, 5G in the future, MPLS internet, that fabric has always been there. But if you then look at the right-hand side, when you're looking at connecting sites over potential global cloud backbones, whether it's infrastructure as a service with these global cloud providers, such as AWS, Azure, and even Alibaba, or whether it's software as a service, such as Microsoft 365 or Salesforce, all of this goes through what we call our programmable automated SD-WAN management. And you see all of these little bubbles in the middle that allow access to these things. Now we have some very unique partnerships and some of these are industry first, Many of them are industry only, as in Cisco is the only technology provider to have these partnerships. So if we go from top to bottom with Megaport and Equinix, we basically offer you as a customer the ability to use the global cloud providers backbones agnostically to connect branches across the world. Very innovative. We're expecting this to be a major shift in cloud networking in probably 12 or 18 next months. Next, a little bit more familiar, I would say, in our comfort zone, partnerships with AWS, Alibaba, Microsoft, and Google in terms of multi-cloud integration, right? Whether you have multiple stack applications hosted in any or all of these, um, bringing that into your SD-WAN fabric is what this allows. And then probably the last one, which is the most, the one we're most familiar with, is optimizing certain applications. We have a unique uh, optimization capability with Microsoft 365 or Office 365 as it used to be called. And very soon we're launching the very same with WebEx where we're gonna be delivering optimized application performance with real-time performance metrics based on, um, let me pause there for a second. And then last, we've got application optimization, which is probably closest in our comfort zone with optimization for Microsoft 365, which previously was known as Office 365, and coming in an upcoming release, we're gonna be having application optimization for WebEx as well. Now, what is SD-WAN's role in a SASE architecture? First of all, it's to make sure that we've got on-demand and optimized, and I would even say optimal cloud networking. Secondly, obviously there's a security component to it and that's secure segmentation and network policy control centralized and aligned to what is the third item, which is optimized user application experience. So these three are really the fundamental building blocks of SD-WAN's role in the SASE architecture. Now, if we break this down in a little infographic, you know, secure SD-WAN, whether it's Meraki or Viptela really brings this to the table. First of all, obviously automation and cloud-based orchestration. And in the case of Viptela, that is still available on-premise as well. What that brings to the table is, is zero-touch onboarding for sites, zero-touch provisioning. Something that's been very, very useful in these times of pandemic where deployment is no longer requiring an engineer. You can just shift the box and anyone that can plug in an ethernet cable and a power cable can bring up a site because everything happens from that automation perspective. Second one is the dynamic performance routing. And what that brings to the table is predictable application performance and consistent user experience. Remember, the data is everywhere now, so we have to make sure that our users are happy. Now, that wouldn't be possible if we're not having the right visibility. And visibility, 
goes across a couple of things. Obviously, there's analytics. We were using software as a service telemetry in the case of Microsoft 365. And we're working with some very smart thresholds in terms of an AI and ML perspective to predict what the network may be doing next and anticipate uh, and reroute the traffic, as I mentioned previously. Now, obviously, we have to integrate that security and that network policy into a single control and make sure that we do the proper segmentation so that if one element is exposed, that doesn't necessarily mean the entire network is exposed. Next, we're talking about middle mile optimization. And this is that revolution I was talking about that we're expecting probably in the next 12 to 18 months, whereby it will become possible to accept, attach branches anywhere in the world and, and using the Google Cloud Provider's backbone as a means to connect that. Now, that may sound complicated, but what we've attempted to achieve is to have that automation and that cloud-based orchestration to sit in the middle to take away that complexity. And then last but not least, is to provide that single pane of glass in terms of cloud networking and orchestration in terms of having cloud on-ramp and multi-cloud access. So what are the two major SASE use cases? Left-hand side, and I think this one is, is really become popular over the past 18 months, and I don't think it's going away anytime soon. It's remote working, which will likely evolve to hybrid working. But what it means is that worker may be working from anywhere, right? Monday, Friday, maybe working from home. Tuesday, Thursday, maybe working from a small satellite office. And on Wednesday, that worker may be going into the main office. That worker has the expectation of the same experience across the board to any of those applications, regardless where he or she is working from. So that seamless connection to apps and data everywhere is absolutely key, but it needs to be secure. Given that worker is gonna be in multiple locations, home, internet cafe, satellite office, branch office, the security posture needs to be consistent. So we have to be able to authenticate those users and ensure that the device that is being used is the, has a proper health, has a right security posture. And then obviously we need to deliver the best possible connectivity and application experience for that remote worker. The second one, and probably a little bit more familiar, is the secure edge, or let's call it the branch, if you will, where we're trying to streamline the connectivity to apps across multiple office locations. And we're basically provisioning the SD-WAN fabric to thousands of users and locations. We've got a host of customers in India and outside of India with thousands, many thousands of locations that we flip on, that we switch on, on a single SD-WAN fabric. Again, providing secure access to those applications, that data and direct internet access is key. And we have to be able to identify any kind of issues across service providers, software as a service, public and private cloud hosted apps. Now, you may ask yourself as, as, as one of our loyal customers, why would I pick Cisco? And the answer is pretty straightforward. And, and if you think about it, it's really important. Uh, and for those of you who've, who've seen me present before, I always say SASE is a journey where the starting point and the destination is probably going to be different for every single customer. But one thing is for sure, there will be challenges along the way. And that's where it's important that you've got the most possible experience guide to help you and guide you along every step of the way. And so when you're thinking about planning or building or deploying an SD-WAN fabric and extending that into SASE, you really have to consider three things here. One, Cisco as a technology vendor has the longest and widest experience in networking across the board. There's no other vendor out there that has that experience. We absolutely got your back on this. We've seen quite a few customers that underestimate the shift that happens from the architecture of a traditional WAN to an SD-WAN and overlook sometimes obvious routing uh, complex, uh, complications and then find out when they're deploying SD-WAN that things may not work as expected. So that's where it's key that you've got a vendor that got your back. Secondly, we've got the most complete SASE portfolio. We have solutions at every intersection of that journey. Again, it may vary where you start that journey. It may 
very whatever is the destination of your journey. But at every single intersection, we've got a solution to fit your to fit your requirements. And then last but not least, we continue to innovate. You will have seen on the we were again a leader on the latest Magic Quadrant. Uh, that's on the back of a lot of innovations that we've done with regards to cloud on ramp and the ability of using middle mile, or as I mentioned already before in the, in the presentation, using the global cloud provider's backbone to connect branches across the world. Absolutely innovation, cutting edge. Cisco got you covered there as well. Now, you don't have to take my word for it. Here are a few key numbers. Now, I just alluded to it. The Magic Quadrant came out not too long ago for 2021. We're once again a Magic Quadrant leader for one edge infrastructure. We're by far the vendor with the largest install base with more than 40,000 SD-WAN deployments, 70% of which is Fortune 100. And if we're looking at our market share, we still are by far the number one SD-WAN vendor in the market. And obviously our SASE innovations have been recognized as well. The latest that we've had was uh, the CRN 2020 Tech Innov Innovators Award. Amazing recognition of how Cisco can help you from an SD-WAN perspective and from a SASE perspective. Speaking about SASE, there's obviously an element of security in there. And with that, I'm at the end of my session, but what I would like to do next is introduce you to my good friend, Vishak, who will walk you through the security components. Vishak, over to you. Thank you, Danny. Thank you for setting the wonderful stage about the SD-WAN importance in terms of the SASE journey. So Danny set up a good foundation to take off from how does security fit into the whole SASE journey? And let's begin by understanding what are the macro drivers for SASE? And we will cover about the market shifts towards security and what is Cisco's multifunction cloud edge is all about. And also talk about what are the Cisco SASE offerings and how do you plan your SASE journey from beginning of in terms of this important adoption cycle. What are the macro drivers for SASE? If you look at it uh, from a customer point of view, there's a tsunami of uh, application uh, which are being consumed outside your traditional data center and that's emergence of your cloud. And that mega shift outside your captive data center is actually pushing customers to look at a different application architecture per se, because the moment your application access back to your data center, it adds up your cost for backhauling. It, it adds complexity and it, it, it also from a security point of view, both the IT decision makers and as well as the security decision makers prefer a complete cloud-based native solution. So applications are the important key drivers. The second big drivers uh, for SASE adoption is actual business continuity and risk management. We've all seen in the pandemic how the convergence of wide area networks with remote access cloud security has actually happened. And if you look at it, the gold standard for supporting a hybrid workforce, be it at campus, be it at the branch, be it at the remote, it's about securing your workforce anywhere. Today, an office environment is just not your corporate headquarters, but it's like a very large cyber cafe. People walk in, carry out your work and duties, and then move out. So you got to build your networking and security layer from a flexibility point of view and making sure your risk is mitigated. And that's where the adoptions of SASE is moving towards. And the third important uh, driver um, is very clearly the IT buyer behavior. Of course, we all know the SaaS adoption in terms of providing agility and cost advantage, but also customers are looking for, how do I look at my security appliance box, which has been in a sort of bought over with multifunction features, can it compete with my SASE functionalities per se? So there is a big transition towards uh, adopting the best of the breed uh, security framework. And how do I deliver that with the cloud orchestration per se? So the transition from an on-premise UTM vendor with a, a, a security functionalities added vis-a-vis, -vis, can I get these best of the breed delivered via cloud and orchestrated via cloud? That's what the customer's behaviors are actually changing. And we are seeing those early adoptions in the banking and financial sector. 
Last and very important uh, piece, which is the security vendor characteristics. Every vendor is claiming to be a SASE, uh, uh, you know, security provider or a networking path provider. But if you really look at the SASE adoption is actually around multi-service. And the multi-service is spanning across your SD-WAN, which Danny beautifully touched about it. It's about your firewall as a service, your secure web gateway, your cloud access security brokerage, CASB. And how do you provide zero trust network access back to your um, you know, customers, back to your contractors, back to your employees? So we are seeing this collapsing of WAN edge and the security services edge. And that's that's what the vendors are actually you know, sort of playing around there. And if you look at it, a single vendor with, uh, for a SASE, and there's a lot of vendor consolidation, which is expected because best of the breed delivered with the cloud orchestration is what customers are loving it because it gives you a consistent policy enforcement, a great admin control in terms of visibility and control, what uh, you get in terms of policy enforcement. And security need not be compromised just because you're going to a SASE. Uh, the depth of the functionality, the security efficacy is still an important parameter and equally the performance for metrics in terms of your capabilities uh, to deliver a, a seamless user experience per se. So broadly, these are the four large key macro drivers on uh, your towards SASE. But let's look at a little bit deeper into what are the SASE building blocks from a security point of view, right? Danny beautifully touched about the hybrid van architecture on SD van part of it. That's a very important base on which uh, on, on which the foundations of SASE is built, where you will have a very lightweight branch device collapsed with network and security and it can it actually integrate with a third party service via service chaining that's another business model what competitors are actually offering and can it be a single oem delivered from an orchestration point of view and that's what we're going to you know sort of touch about that and the second big layer is the secure web gateway how do you get your secure remote branches roaming users get your user visibility and defend against those malware attacks what you day in day out go out and the third important pillar in terms of the building blocks for SASE is firewall as a service. Because the nature of outbound shift traffic is actually changed. Uh, with the cloud adoption, public cloud SaaS adoption is uh, east-west traffic. Traditional, you have your layers of your firewall, IPS, content filtering. Uh, as, as Actually, it was about north and south, but now it has changed to a east-west traffic, whereby your remote branch public users are wanting something like a cloud-based demilitarized zone. And that's where customers are really looking for a centralized firewall policy, depending upon what you have in your data center, your cloud firewall, your branch firewall. Can I have a seamless centralized firewall policy with micro segmentation capabilities built in? So firewall as a service with micro segmentation is becoming an important building block for SASE. And the last two important parameters are your cloud access security brokerage, which is the CASB part of it, where you want to be compliant with your SaaS applications, where you want to have application visibility, where you need to get your user behavior and user access capabilities built in, in the CASB functionalities per se. But the important foundations to all of these um, you know, technology pillars is zero trust. And how do you get an identity aware solution in place whereby any access is provided only upon uh, providing the valid credentials. And how do you triage between uh, a roaming user? Is he the real user who is trying to access that application? Is he the uh, right device to access uh, the corporate applications? Is he having the right application identity? That means is he the right user to access uh, that right application, right? So the triaging of these three pillars, the user, the device, and the application identity is what is the foundation of zero trust uh, is actually being built up. And coupled with geofencing, when you really look at uh, the contextual intelligence, who is accessing? Is he the right role user? Does he have the right credentials to access that particular uh, application, that applications within that field? So customers are really building zero trust with geofencing capabilities whereby you want to make sure a, a contextual awareness in your identity access management. And how do you bring in a traditional identity provider software to actually a cloud federator? 
with mobile first as an identity. So these are the five key building blocks of SASE per se. But how does it transform into delivering a user a control uh, across three important areas, which is how do you look at a collapsed secure networking functionality, be it firewall, your software defined perimeter, your VPN, your DNS, your quality of service. How do I get a networking framework built in? And SASE gives you that. And it's just not about the networking part of it, but how do you get your application control, your intelligent proxy capability, your productivity controls, who needs to access when, whether this site is a bad site to access, how do you look at your URL filtering capability? And top it all, how do you get your shadow IT visibility? Can you control your uh, secure applications via an application block across your cloud branch and roaming users? Can you get your malware sandboxing in the cloud? So if you really look at it, SASE gives you these control points on secure networking and secure application. And how do you actually look at secure cloud access from a, a data leak prevention point of view? How do you look at building tighter application controls and file controls? How do you block users from going through a high risk domains, right? And how do you isolate if you see a very sensitive uh, uh, user being infected, how do you actually isolate to him automatically so that the malware movement doesn't happen laterally. And we spoke about geofencing. How do you make sure that the user and the application access are tightly integrated? Lastly, the SASE control gives you a better reduction in latency. It accelerates your SAS adoption. And of course, cost and centralized policy and compliance management. So if you look at these five building blocks of SASE, gives you phenomenal amount of security controls defined uh, uh, and as touched upon by Danny in the previous session as well. So let's look at what are the market shifts of having understood the SASE building blocks. SASE just doesn't start with networking. It includes more, right? We, Danny beautifully touched upon the SD-WAN transformation, what is actually happening in the enterprise. But it, ha it has a whole lot of security functionalities like secure web gateway, CASB, your DNS security, your firewalling, your layer seven firewalling coupled with your identity. So SASE is not uh, uh, just about uh, connectivity with security, but more about even identity. And that's what is defined. Let's look at the SASE market shift, how real it is. And this is a uh, uh, latest Gartner uh, view of how this market will, be, will evolve from a $4.8 billion to actually a $15 billion market. So this market shift is real. Right, and these five pillars, what we spoke about, SD-WAN, firewall as a service, secure web gateway, your CASB and zero trust network access forms the bulk of this market. And this top three uh, transformation, which is SD-WAN, firewall as a service, and secure web gateway actually forms the bulk of the market moving forward. So this transformation, customers are real. And how is India customers actually, you know, sort of adopting SASE transition? Right, as I said, these three pillars to start with SD-WAN, firewall as a service and secure web gateway. These are the standalone individual technology tracks which customers wanting to get it converged via an SD-WAN secure web gateway and a firewall inbuilt service. These are the first transitions what we are seeing early in the Indian market. And the combined SASE Indian market actually stands in FY 2021 as close to about 77 million uh, US dollars. So this shift is real uh, for, for, for real and customers are moving in this direction. So what is Cisco is going to you know, sort of add value there, right? What do we bring in as a table? Uh, one, we are a very strong uh, SD-WAN player as highlighted by uh, Danny. We are the market leaders. We are the Gartner market leaders and from the magic quadrant point of view. And we have a world-class security stack built for customers in terms of onboarding uh, into the cloud. Right. We start with DNS layer security. We have the secure web gateway functionalities and we delivered a cloud delivered firewall capability, both from a layer three, layer four, layer seven firewalling capability is delivered inbuilt into the SASE platform. And we bundled with our cloud access security brokerage capabilities. Right. So we, we give unique capabilities like DLP, browser isolation. On top of all, it, it gets the threat intelligence from uh, Cisco Talos, one of the top leading uh, threat intelligence provider across the globe. And it, it helps customers to adopt the zero trust network access 
with Cisco Duo capabilities per se. And all of these security stacks are actually orchestrated with a single unified platform called SecureTex. And this is actually delivered by a cloud platform. So for customers, the cloud ramping is quite easy and quite simple. Let me walk you through that. How do we do the cloud ramping, right? And it's completely hands off uh, whereby we can enable the automation uh, very clearly from our SD-WAN um, console, be it a Miraki or a Viptela console. The tunnel initiation to the Cisco umbrella platform is quite seamless. And it, it, it gives you a very simple, easy to use management capability. And my colleague Sandeep is going to walk through this demo on how you actually do a cloud ramp uh, from an IPsec tunnel creation uh, from your SD-WAN on-site uh, to your uh, umbrella nearest cloud per se, right? And this is going to be demonstrated in terms of uh, how do you choose the site? How do you enable your inspection policy? And that will be demonstrated in the following session per se. Having said that, is SASE is not, is not about just uh, uh, you know connectivity part of it. How do you have measured performance? How do you look at measured performance? And this is where Cisco Umbrella, which is our uh, cloud ramp, um, brings in a great amount of peering capability. At, at Cisco uh, Umbrella, we paired with more than about 1,000 plus peering partnership, and some of them are highlighted here. And we have close to about 6,000 peering sessions to create shortcuts. So when you get onto a SASE cloud, does it give you the shortest path by design? By, and it, does it give you the security efficacy? So it is absolutely important customers to look for a measured latency uh, uh, reduction and acceleration in your speed uh, in terms of accessing the cloud infrastructure. And this is something which is a third party report done by Mercom very recently, where the data captured uh, compared between a direct internet access compared to a Cisco secure internet gateway. And we've been able to reduce the hop count to as high as about 33%. And we actually improved the latency and traffic consistency up to about 73%. And this is proof of the pudding, right? So customers, when you really look off uh, from a bake-off point of view, uh, please measure your latency when you actually hop into a cloud security access per se. Having said the access part of it, let's look at the efficacy part of it. And this is again a third party report, which actually um, helped uh, customers to differentiate and reduce the noise levels of uh, how do you measure security efficacy in a SASE world? How do you look at uh, a detection rate? Where Cisco Umbrella came on with the flying colors with a detection rate of close to about 97% and a lowest false positive rate per se. And this is uh, real world testing, which customers actually came out and then said that our security efficacy is much much better than some of our competitors so test your efficacy test your latency capability before getting onto the sassy journey and that's a larger point so what do we bring in across table as cisco we start with sd wan there is a dns security layer there's a cloud firewall layer and there is a secure web gateway with casb functionalities and a packet which traverses all of it uh, goes through these security checks, right? Be it a DLP, be it a browser isolation. And we've been able to give this kind of security efficacy of 97% because the layers of security which is built comes from a best of the breed. And we have been able to orchestrate on a single unified platform, which is our SecureX platform. And this is uh, AICPA SOC certified as well. So, Customers, when you really look for uh, uh, migrating to SASE, please look for security, efficacy, and performance. And these are two important parameters. At Cisco, we are uniquely positioned to bring the best of the both worlds uh, with uh, our networking capability. We are the largest SD-WAN provider, uh, leading in the Gartner's Magic Quadrant uh, in the SD-WAN front. And security point of view, leaders in Zero Trust for two years and running in Forrester. And we've been able to uh, bring in the observability uh, capability with 1000i, 1000i acquisition as well. So customers, you have best of the three worlds coming in, knocking in your doors in terms of uh, looking at your SASE adoption. To sum it up, how do you look at your SASE journey? 
uh, SASE journey has to be in a phased manner and it has to be looked at uh, with security, efficacy and performance as two important parameters, whereby you look at benchmark security effic efficacy metrics over just the feature clutter, right? And performance is super critical. Better the accessibility, better the peering gateway, better the reliability, and actually latency is super critical when you're actually getting on your layers, on-premise stack of uh, your capabilities and building into the cloud, right? So please benchmark your performance metrics as well. And third important point is your vendor consolidation. How do you get your best of the breed uh, security stack with single cloud policy orchestration? So management is super critical. You don't want to do the same problems what we actually created uh, back in the enterprise, uh, buying point products with multiple consoles, really getting into an alert fatigue. We want to avoid that when you're actually making your SASE journey. And of course, SASE has to be in a subscription model. So with this, uh, I would hand it over to, uh, uh, to our esteemed customer, Raghunandan, to actually give you a live example of how he actually traveled uh, the SASE journey with Cisco. Over to you, Mr. Raghunandan. Walk us through your real life adoption on SASE. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Bishop. Hello, everyone. My name is Raghunandan. Uh, I'm working for United States Pharm Pharmacopoeia and I'm an IT professional with 15 years of experience in infrastructure services. Uh, I'm currently engaged with USP since four years. So USP uh, is dedicated to helping improve global health through standard setting in compounding, biologics, pharmaceutical manufacturing and other fields. So I'm experienced in design implementation and management of network infrastructure, global network operations, data center operations, business continuity, enterprise technology standardization, people management, leadership, and IT budgeting. That's on my uh, profile. So uh, we are actually going through some challenges in USP where we are looking to refresh our van due to current challenges of complexity due to multi-vendor solutions, easy of rolling of new services, flexibility, and change management, etc. Also, we were looking to improve our security posture due to change in work environment by, by pandemic. Taking this refresh opportunity, we were also looking to explore SASE architecture to meet our needs of van transformation and security. Uh, what solutions we have actually explored and deployed? We evaluated multiple OEMs with various rounds of technical dis discussions, POC and demonstrations. Cisco was chosen as our sol solution provider for our SASE transformation. This was based on few criteria like completeness of solution, roadmap, and single OEM to provide both networking and security solutions. We have deployed uh, Cisco's SD-WAN, Umbrella, DNS security, web proxy, and cloud access security broker solutions. And why, you can ask me why Cisco? Since this requirement was spanning multiple areas of technologies like SASE, switches, etc., we were looking to looking for a complete solution which were matching our requirement. After spending a, a considerable amount of time and evaluation with multiple vendors, we have chosen Cisco due to the following reasons. It has single SASE solution providing network and solution security, prevent technical support, technical capabilities of Cisco SASE solutions. So these are the main reasons why we have chosen Cisco. Thank you.